peace. I'm back in case you missed me. I know I did a whole kitchen thing today, but I am just heading out on my walk. Oh, and for, before I get too far, let me do this. Got to get this thing going. I always set that. Oh, I'm going to get hit by the sprinklers. I keep track of, well, I keep track of everything except I really watch my, um, my, uh, what do you call it? Um, anyway, I just keep track of everything. So, since today, I've got to turn you back around. Um, I can't run because I cannot record when I'm running or jogging. <laughs> I guess I could, but that would just take it to a whole other level. But since I cannot do that today because yesterday I did more jogging and than I normally do and my knees are a little bit sore, I don't want to push it. So I'm walking today, and because I'm walking, I want to talk to you about resentments. Something I've been wanting to talk to you about for a few days, but I was going to make a, like a worksheet for you so you could print it and use it forever. But I didn't make the worksheet yet. You probably don't need it. I might still make it because it wouldn't take much. But I figured since I'm walking, I can talk about it now. And I'm gonna take my time talking about it because it's a really important subject. So it's like I'm getting out really late from my walk today. It's 10 after eight already. So I don't wanna walk too slow but I don't want to walk so fast that I'm out of breath either. Actually, it's nice. There's a little bit of a breeze. It's not as hot as it has been. Okay, resentments. What does resentment even mean? I think sometimes it's really important, even though you might use words that you know what the meaning is or you think you know what it means. Sometimes it really helps to get the def definition of the actual word because you might be a little bit off on really what it is. So resentment is feeling bitter, feeling like you've been wronged in some way. And I bet you could feel that way about anything. I mean, potentially, um, whether it is your partner, a friend, you know, they say something that just kind of irks you and you just go, you know, like, screw them. Like, that was rude. Why did they say that? Could have been somebody at the store. It can be a politician. It can be your kid. It could be your parent. It could be a situation. There are so many things that could get under your skin, right? That bother you. Anything that could potentially make you feel bitter, make you feel misunderstood, mistreated, disrespected, belittled, um, unworthy, um, embarrassed, any angry, any of those things are potentially causing resentments. And if you have resentments, you know, a lot of times you might just be irritated about it 
and sometimes it'll stick with you for years and years. I mean, sometimes things come up for me that um, and still go, ugh, like, you know, what a jerk or Oh, that was so embarrassing, like just thinking about things. So that means probably throughout your life, you have carried a lot of resentments that you build more resentments. Like it's like taking a bag and filling it up. And with that bag being filled up, it just gets bigger and heavier. So that's what happens with your energy. It starts building it up over the years, getting heavier and heavier in your energy. And when it gets heavy in your energy, if, not, if you never work on doing a conscious release on it, then you will build it up so much that it'll start affect, affecting you emotionally, mentally, the way you think, the way you perceive. Like, how, have you ever seen somebody who seems to have a negative perspective in general? Like, they tend to see the negative in things. That's someone that has a lot of resentment <laughs> because they have built up so re so much resentment that they're pretty negative about everything. Um, people that complain a lot, they have a lot of resentment built up. People who are angry a lot, they have a lot of resentment built up. People who see the, the glass half empty or are pessimistic, they also have resentment. Like these are all signs that there's resentment as a driving force in that person's life. And if you get to the point where it is affecting the way you perceive things, the way you believe about things, the way you treat people, the way that you start feeling emotionally more often than not, the way that you, your attitudes are and the way you talk, that means it's already seeping into your being and affecting you. That's bad enough. But the next step is, if you continue that, you're already, it's already seeping into who you are and how you are in the world, how you show yourself in the world, how you, how you interact in the world that's also going to attract negative um, situations in your life. How you speak, how you think, how you feel, how you believe is what is going to dictate what kind of situations that you start experiencing in your life. It'll start dictating the kinds of people that will be in your life and it will repel the kinds of people that do not resonate with negative. People who are successful or are content or are happy, healthy. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that their life is perfect, but they tend to overall do their best to carry a higher perspective. Um, they're not going to want to be around people who in general are negative, pessimistic, have a, 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 you know, a negative slant on life. You're going to repel those kind of people from you. You know, I have a client that had, she's a, um, she's a yearly client. So she gets sessions every, every week for a year. And she was telling me, she was asking me about this neighbor that she has. And she was saying, you know, she's so, 
she's always complaining about people and always being so negative. She goes, God, it really bothers me. So it's going to bother her more than like a lot of people because she's aware about this kind of behavior because she also has to work on that herself like we all do, right? But she's aware that she has to work, that she's always, you know, doing her best to perceive higher, to think the best. Like she, it's a work in progress and everybody should be working on that. So when you are actively working on that and aware of it, you notice even more when people are being that way. And then you don't want to be around them because you're already doing your best to not be that way. Even in times when it's hard that you have to work through something because we're all always, we're always going to have an opportunity to experience feeling bitter, feeling resentful, feeling mistreated, feeling judged, feeling unworthy. Like we are always going to have the opportunity to have that come our way. So we're dealing with it ourselves, and we're doing our best to deal with it the best way we can to keep our body, mind, and, and energy in the highest vibration possible to live a better life. So when you're working on it yourself, being aware of it, and somebody is just super sloppy and could care less about what they're spewing into the world around them, they're just like, saying anything they don't even they, they don't care to try in fact they're so used to being negative or saying being pessimistic or saying the you know seeing the worst or the, or you know the bad they get so used to it they don't even notice that they're like that and they're fine with it and she told me that, so this client tells me, I told her that it makes me feel uncomfortable and I really don't care to hear it. But every time she comes around, she does it anyway. You know, what do I do? And she's always asking me to go, you know, for walks or whatever with her. And I said, Are you telling her that it makes you uncomfortable or that how it might, you know, negatively affect her? Unless she cares about working on it, she's not going to work on it, you know? So you can't change her. So if you are going to be around her, you're going to know that you're going to have to deal with that. You telling her it's uncomfortable is not going to make her change. Unless she wants to, of course. But if she's comfortable in it, she just forgets about it the next time and does it again. And... I said, so you need to choose whether you want to be around someone like that or not. And she's like, I don't. And I said, then tell her no. Don't hang out with her. I said, there's a reason why she's always asking you to be around her. Because nobody else wants to be around her. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to hear that. So, there you go. Your opportunity to make a choice. So, what I was want to say further is once it starts affecting you to the point of how you talk, how you see things, how you experience things, how you, you know, your attitudes, if you continue to be that way, if you continue not to release resentments, it starts affecting you emotionally, starts affecting you mentally, whether you know it or not, whether you care or not, but you're not doing anything about it, it will build and build and build. And so it starts energetically, and then it starts seeping into your emotion, your emotional, um, your emotional state. It starts seeping into your mental state, it starts seeping into your beliefs, it starts seeping into your relationships, it starts seeping into every part of your life. If you do nothing and you continue to build upon those resentments, 
the next step is it'll start seeping into your physical body and it'll start breaking down your health. You'll start having things happen in your body that you can't explain. Like you'll be like, not feeling good, but you don't know what it is. You go to the doctor, the doctor can't figure out what it is. Doctor says nothing's wrong with you. Now, you know, a lot of people don't like take into account and neither do doctors a lot of times. Not all, I won't say all, but doctors are great, but they don't often think about or know how all this stuff starts energetically and then comes into the emotions and the mental and then into the body. So they look for, they look at the symptoms of what you're describing and feels bad. And if they can't see anything, they just say, there's nothing wrong. And you're saying, but I feel something wrong. I don't feel good. This is like, and then you get frustrated and nobody stops to think that there may have been something in your life or many things. In this case, we're talking about resentments of feeling bitter or mistreated or unworthy or belittled or disrespected, all the things that have built up and now are starting to attack your physical body because that's the next step. The next step after that is you start having actual problems with your body, like an organ. Um, you break a knee, you can't see, lose your hearing, whatever. Like it'll start doing something to your actual physical body that you can detect. First, it'll start out just feeling like you don't feel good. Then it'll continue until something doesn't feel good. And that's why when I do a lot of my healings, when I am looking at the energy of my clients, I'm seeing what's in their energy. I'm seeing if it's attached to something emotionally or mentally, spiritually, something, a, for, a foreign force outside of them. I'm seeing what energetically is affecting them. And then I'm seeing where it's affecting them in all areas of their energy because a pattern will show up and then it'll go and show me where it is connecting in on a physical level. It might be in an organ, it might be in several organs. It might be in a system like a digestive system. Excuse me. It might be on your foot. It might be in your back, in your head, in your ears, wherever. I'm seeing where it is hitting an area of your physical body and starting to create a bigger problem. So the good thing when I'm doing these sessions is that I can stop that process that is happening, that pattern, and I can back it out and I can restore things and to a healthier level and a flow because there's blocks in your energy, there's emotions in your energy, there's anger or thoughts, beliefs, that are getting stuck in your physical body and it's now gonna start causing a physical problem. So, that not only happens on the levels of your life in this current life time period, but I even work on even deeper levels where I can find that some of it, most of it, stems from a DNA level. So you came into this life with some vibrations 
whether they're emotional, mental, or just trauma passed down your family line. And imagine, I'm not just talking about from your mom and your dad and your grandparents. Think about your whole family line from the very beginning, whatever countries that you originated from. And you might have originated from many countries. And within those countries, the kinds of problems, difficulties, beliefs, experiences, traumas, whatever happened in those countries that you may have feel completely disconnected from that. Yeah, you might be Irish, but you don't feel any connection to any of the issues that have been in Ireland through all of time. It doesn't matter. In your DNA, you are everything of your family line. And you will have issues come through in your DNA that are going to affect you today. So if you don't know about that, how can you shift it? How can you release it? Imagine if you had a parent or a grandparent that seemed to be really bitter, negative, um, or, you know, like a lot of people my age, our parents were in the depression. You know, what happens in that? You know, what kind of beliefs come from living through the depression? And um, how those things can be passed on to you. How you might have been raised because of it. So that's just an example. Like, you can understand those things because your parents and your grandparents are closer to you and those situations might be a long time ago but they're also in your lifetime or close to your lifetime that you could understand but now go all the generations back to the beginning of your family line wherever and whoever that was that you probably will never know what kind of stuff can be in your DNA. So, that stuff can be a problem too. I mean, it'll come up in healings, which is nice. And the thing is, when people work with me for years, you know, have ongoing sessions, the longer we work together, the deeper we peel back and we can see things. So that's the benefit of doing that. You know, coming for one or five or 10 or 20 sessions is great, can do a lot. But if you're like, I have several clients that just get sessions every week, year after year after year, they really are digging deep into stuff that would never be excavated if they hadn't been going through the process continually to reach those things. That's just the way it is. Also important is if you were to do that, you want to make sure you work with somebody that has a very expanded and um, ability to see far and deep. Some people are not at that level. And the way you get at that level is your soul's evolution. It's not your first day. It's not the first lifetime that you've been doing this work. Your practice, your own practice that you work on every day and how much you are doing the work to be able to attain those deep levels. So for instance, I've been doing healings for professionally 25 years. And that's my main 
source of work is healings. It's what I do every week, several days a week. I have lots of clients. So because I am constantly doing healings and have for 25 years professionally, Obviously, I have the ability to see a lot more and go a lot deeper. Plus, I founded Light Activation Healing. So that also accounts for things. So if you're gonna work with someone, you really wanna take into consideration what is their experience level, what is their expertise within their experience level, and you know what they're really offering for you okay this was not about that this was not about my work or how i can see things or how i can help things but i'm telling you because this is one way that you can really work on clearing these things up for yourself okay going back to the topic which we are on topic, but reeling back to this whole resentment thing, where I'm talking about you have this, these bitternesses, you have these, you know, feelings of, of anger or betrayal or being misunderstood or feeling belittled or unworthy. And it can be your friend, your mother, your, partner, your child, your aunt, your teacher, a person in the store, like you got triggered and it irritated you and you feel bitter from it and you feel mistreated by it in some way. If you never do anything to release that, I said in the beginning of this video, it's like taking a sack and filling it up every time something happens in your life, which it will very often, especially with people we love, because people we love are going to be the ones that affect us most, that will get under our skin the fastest, because we care and we get hurt. So even if it's like you let it go and you're not letting it affect your relationship. It is because you didn't let it, you didn't release it. And it's affecting you because you're still holding it in your vibration, which means you're gonna have that vibration between you and that person continue to be triggered back and forth. Maybe not every day, maybe every day, but it's there. And worse, is that you carry it and you add more and more to the sack, weighing down your energy more and more, then it seeps into your emotions, then it seeps into your thoughts, it seeps into your beliefs, it seeps into how you perceive things, it, then it seeps into physical discomfort, unexplainable physical discomfort, because at first you won't, know why you're feeling that way and a lot of times doctors will say did the test nothing wrong you get pissed because you know you don't feel right then eventually it'll seep into an actual physical issue that can be seen and detected whether it's a failing or a weakened organ bones muscles skin whatever, blood, whatever physical issue, disease, can be any of those things. And that is because you've carried this stuff and just added to it and never released it. And when it gets to the point where it's affecting your physical body, it gets much harder to, to uh, release that and fix that because it means it's been going on too long 
it's not impossible to fix it. It's definitely not impossible to release it, but everybody's different. And sometimes people say that they wanna release things. They wanna heal things and they're open and they're serious, but you do the work on them. And like when I do a session, sometimes I'll see people just trying to hold on so tight to their issues because it's what they know. Because what would life be if they didn't have these issues anymore? They're so used to having those issues as a core behavior that they don't know what they would do without it. And that's another reason you might have heard sometimes when people say like healing crisis, like don't clear someone so much all the way that because they'll have a healing crisis. What does that mean? It means they got so cleared up that it totally flips them out because they do not know life without all those issues. And on some levels, even if those issues are hurting you and you don't like them, they are serving you, which is why you've held on to them. So you never want to clean somebody up so fast all the way that they go into a crisis because that can be a problem. Okay, that said, if this is why I am having this discussion with you, and this is why I am taking my time to discuss it, because it is important. And what you can do to do release of resentments, it's very easy, but I recommend that you do it once a week when you first start doing it. Like commit to doing it once a week for a month or six weeks. And then after that, do it every two weeks for a couple of months. And then after that, do it once a month forever. Unless something comes up that's really got you upset, you want to do it more and you want to do it then. And I also suggest you do neutral separation along with it. And I have a video on my YouTube and I will post it on this post later when I get home that how to do neutral separation cut cords and send energy back that is not yours, that is lodged in your body back to where it came from. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me because my thing just did a weird thing. And call your energy back because you know what? When you get upset or triggered by anything or anyone, you also leave your energy with them. So not only are you taking their energy and putting it in you, which is very harmful to your health and ment mentality, because now you're thinking with your energy and other people's energy, you're never going to make the best decisions for yourself. If you have other people's energy in your energy, it's very confusing because you're hearing a lot of voices and you're thinking it's all yours. So if you can't make up your mind about things a lot of times, unless you're Gemini, that could be a problem. Um, it can be because you have a lot of other people's energy in your energy. And it's very confusing because your perspective is going to be different from their perspective. And the more perspectives you have inside of you, that's scary when you think about it. So every time you get triggered by someone, you are giving them your energy and you are taking their energy. So you're depleting your energy and you're cluttering up your energy with other people's energy. And let's just go a little further with that. If you have somebody else's energy in you, that means you're also embedding their issues in you. So if they have 
entities, negativity, illness, mental situations, emotional situations. You are embedding that into your energy if you do not clear it. So, can you get sick from that? Absolutely, 100%, yes. Even if it's people that you love, that you're not being triggered by, that you're totally enjoying being with, you are connecting energy with them. If you're not actively cutting cords and doing a neutral separation, even if it's people you get along with and you don't do a clearing on your energy, their energy's in you too. So you're getting their level of vibration. You're getting all their emotional and mental issues and perspectives. And if they have illness, that too, even if you get along with them. Your choice, not a good idea though. This stuff is real. This ain't no joke. And um, you are going to be much better off if you take care of this on a regular basis. Not once, it's not enough. Not twice, it's not enough. Not three times, it's not enough. You gotta do it ongoing, just like you go to the dentist, just like you take a shower, just like you go to sleep, just like you eat, just like you brush your teeth. You have to take care of your energy too. If you didn't brush your teeth ever, it's not gonna be too good for you, is it? If you never took a shower, it's not gonna be too good for you, is it? If you never ate, it's not gonna be too good for you, is it? So if you don't take care of your energy, that is the fastest way to, to F up your life, F up your relationships, F up your health, F up your soul evolution. That's just the, the fact. So, this is how you can start releasing resentments. You get a piece of paper. You might want to take notes right now. Get a piece of paper and get a pen. And when you're doing this process, you want to put your pen on the paper and always keep the pen on the paper like you're ready to write. The reason why you want to do that is for two reasons. The first reason is you're telling your consciousness that you're ready to dial in and remember all the people and situations, emotions and thoughts and beliefs and perspectives that you're resentful about. Remember, it can be a person, it can be a place, it can be a perspective, it can be an emotion, it can be a thought you always have, it can be a belief you have, it can be a perspective you have, that you can have a resentment or a bitterness too when you think about it. Okay, now, don't feel guilty if you have people on your list that you love, because you should. Like I said, the people that are closest to you are the people that are going to get under your skin the fastest and the deepest, because you care. They should be on your list. And that doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean that you should feel guilty. It doesn't mean you're wrong. No, it's healthy. You're going 
going to help yourself and you're going to help them by doing this. This is an act of self-care and self-love. So, you put your pen on the paper. That's the first reason. The second reason is when your hand is doing something, it takes your mental mind because your mind always wants to drive everything. Your mind wants to believe that it's the best thing since sliced bread. Your mind wants to think it knows everything. And, you know, props to your mind. It's good to have a mind. But the mind can also be your worst enemy at times. As much as it can help you to be motivated, it can also be the thing that makes you feel insecure and belittled. So you want to go beyond the mind and you, by using, mo moving your hand on the paper, it takes, it gives your mind something to do. The act of just putting the hand with the pen on the paper, that's giving your mind, keeping your mind busy on that, which is great. And when you do that, it connect, you connect more in to your subconscious. And that is where you want to go because you have a lot of sub subconscious beliefs and thoughts that you don't even know we're there because you probably don't tap into your subconscious that much. And when you don't tap into your subconscious that much, you are leaving a lot in there that could be hindering you and causing problems. So, that's why you want to put your hand on the paper to keep your mind busy so your subconscious can also tell you the names, the emotions, the thoughts, the beliefs, the perspectives, and uh, the people and situations that are in your subconscious that you may or may not know about. Okay, now your pen is on the paper. I want you to just start writing whatever comes to your mind people's names, even if you don't know why you're writing their name, even if you wrote Tom and you don't think you know a Tom, doesn't matter. Any name that comes, put it down. You don't know if that name is in your family line somewhere. You don't know if there was somebody named Tom that hurt you when you were a baby and it's stuck in your subconscious. You don't know. So just write any name that comes. And any name, whether you believe it or not. Don't judge it. This is not a time to judge if this is true or not. You're just writing a list. You want to write down any places that come up. Could be a hometown. Could play, be a place you went to that ended up being a living hell. Could, any situation any emotion that has given you a hard time. And even if you write an emotion that you don't understand when you're writing it, just write it. Any thoughts, any beliefs, any perspectives, anything that possibly comes forward, write it down. Don't even think about it for one second. All you wanna do is keep writing because once you start writing, more things will come. And if you stop writing to think about it, you stop the process. You just want to write, 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 write until you just can't write anymore. Okay? And then, I want you to just put the list away for the day. And then go back to it the next day. Put your paper down, your pen down again and see if anything else comes to you. Or between the time you put the paper down and the next time, if things come to you out of the blue, 
Go write it on your list. Don't say, okay, I'll remember that. I'll put it on my list tomorrow. Don't do that because you'll probably forget. Just go write it on your list. And after you do that for the two days, just look through your list, keep your pen on the paper, see if anything else comes through. You might even write like a, a, a color, blue, You're like orange. Like, why would I be resentful of that? Who knows, who cares? If it came to you, write it down. Could be a cartoon, could be a movie. Could be any freaking thing. Could be an animal. Could be anything. Your doctor. A pain. An organ. Anything. An age. Okay? So after you got your list, I want you to hold it, close your eyes, and say, I release these resentments to the light for transmutation okay so what does that mean it means release it to the light the light is whoever is your higher power god universe whoever is your higher power just it's light right for trans Transformation, transmutation, and transformation. Okay? Turning it from what it is to something to light. Turning it from the dark to the light. Okay, you're releasing resentments for transmutation and transformation right now. And so it is done. And then, if you can, Rip it up. Well, you should be able to rip it up. Rip it up. And if you can, light it on fire. If you cannot light it on fire, throw it away. Do whatever you can do. But lighting it on fire is very powerful. And when, it's, when you throw it away or you light it on fire, say, it is done, it is done, it is done. And so it is done. Okay? And so it is. It is done and it is done. Wait. Too many. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Three times. And so it is. Okay? And then you want to cut the cords to it. And you want to do all the neutral separation. I'm going to put that in my video from my YouTube. I'm going to post that link on this thread when I get home. You want to finish with cutting cords and neutral separation. And then you are going to lighten your load. But you want to, if you've not been doing this, you want to do this once a week for four to six weeks. I put it on your calendar so you do it every week. Make space for it. Intend to do it because this is part of your healing. This is part of your self-care. And then after four to six weeks, do it every two weeks for a couple months. And then after do it that, do it once a month forever. And always remember to finish it with the cutting cords and neutral separation. You will enhance your life by doing this. It is life changing. It is so healthy for you. It's healthy for your existence in this world. It's healthy for your soul evolution. It's healthy for your vibration. It's healthy for your relationships healthy for your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies. It's very important. So, that is what I really wanted to tell you today. And I hope that you take this very, very important tool 
and utilize it forever. I do. But if you don't, that's your choice. Can't do anything about it. All I can do is give you tools. It's up to you to either do it or not. You know, it reminds me of when I first got on my path consciously. Like I was always clairvoyant, seeing spirits since I was a little girl. If you read my book, Dead People in My Life, it talks all about it. Um, but when I really consciously got on my spiritual path, it's one thing I really can acknowledge about myself is I, I was hungry for information on how I can make my life better because at that time I had so many, like life was so fucking hard for me. And it was so hard. And I was willing to do anything. And so when I started getting into learning about energy and everything, I'll say remembering about energy because it didn't take long before it all kicked in with a huge familiar, familiarity. And um, I just wanted to know all the techniques I could know. And I would write it down and I would do it. Man, I would do anything and everything I could every single day. I would get up at sunrise go for a walk, open my chakras, let the sun beam into them, all the light. I would say affirmations and then I would walk home and then at sunset I'd go out and with the sun setting I'd dial down my chakras for the night and say affirmations like I was on it. If you, if you take my Manifesting Breakthroughs video e-course, all those things I teach on level one, I was doing all those things. That's why that course is so valuable because it's all the stuff that either I, I learned or I channeled that I did, that I practiced, that changed my life. So I knew how powerful that it was. And I doubt that you'd ever find another course that teaches so much in one course. I highly doubt you'd ever find it anywhere. Because for 40 days, I do a video and teach you some powerful process that is going to help you heal your life in relationships, in self-care, in thoughts, in trauma, in emotions, in perspective, in energy. It's all in there. It's not just a manifesting class. Manifesting is just a benefit you get from having clean energy. You just start getting the things you want in your life because you're doing the work. It's really a healing course. And it is priceless. And that's why when people buy that course, they usually do it over and over again. You know, maybe not right after each other, but I mean, I have people that bought it when I first sold it back in, I think I made that one in, I wanna say 20, something like that. There's people that are still doing it because it's always relevant. And every time you do it, it's gonna be relevant to what's going on at the time. And you hear things that you didn't hear before. And people that don't continue to do it, then they definitely are not working on their, their highest potential. Definitely not. Because if I can still do it, and I can still get benefit, and I'm the one that taught it, then believe me, everybody could still be doing it and could be getting benefit from it. 
Then level two is wow. If you want to learn about energy, that is all about energy. That will take you places you never went before. It'll give you an understanding about energy on depths that you, I am sure, have never experienced. Because that's my jam, energy. And I know how to teach it. So, those courses, Manifesting Breakthroughs Level 1 and 2, they're on my website. And they are hugely, hugely, hugely informative and um, priceless and beneficial. Also, I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. In fact, I have a playlist called Manifesting in the Law of Attraction. Tons of videos in there for free with lots of really good content. So there's that too. Anyway, I just wanted to talk to you about this because it's a really important subject and this, your life can suffer a lot more than is necessary. So anyway, usually I'm home by now, but I think I'm walking a little bit slower because I'm talking. I have about less than a mile. No, maybe about a mile now. And it's 9.05. Usually I'm home by about 8.45, right before it gets dark. But it's nice out tonight. It's a nice breeze. It's not as humid and hot as it has been. So that's nice. But it is still humid. And it is still warm. It's just that the breeze makes it nice. So let me know what you guys think about this. I'd love to hear your comments. If you listen to this, please um, let me know. And also, if you listen to this after it was live, hashtag replay and let me know. That's the etiquette. If you miss a person live on Facebook, the etiquette is when you watch it to hashtag replay and just let the person know, hey, thanks, I watched it. And any questions you have, any comments you have. And um, please remember to like this video. If you found it really useful, you can save it. You can share it. Just give it, share it to somebody who you think can benefit from it. You know, I share, I share myself with you. Who can you share with to pass that play it forward? You know, the more that other people get information and help themselves, the better your life will be if you're connected to them. The better life they'll have, and the better this world will be with more people willing to, you know, self-care, heal, upgrade, vibrate higher, all those things. So please remember to like this video, share it, say hi, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great night. going by on um, weird contraptions. Um, I'm walking along the river. Can't believe it's already Sunday night. This weekend flew, like gosh. Ah, I have so much to do. Oh yeah, if you haven't uh, subscribed to my YouTube channels yet, I posted on my page. Just go to my page, there's two different posts. One of them is my regular YouTube channel. The other one is a channel 
that I do readings on. I'm gonna start doing those readings monthly for every zodiac sign. I'm gonna start doing that soon. Remember to subscribe and make, make sure you hit the notification bell and select that you get notified for all videos. So you get a notice or if you don't get a notice in your email, it'll show up on your YouTube feed. Because sometimes I post videos from my YouTube onto my Facebook and people don't see them. I don't think Facebook likes to share YouTube or other um, links from outside. Um, so because I say that because not many people like like them or or notice them. Sometimes I'm the only one that notices them. So if you subscribe, you'll get the content from there as well. All right, guys. Have a great Sunday night. I hope you all do your resentments. And let's see. I'm going to turn you around so you can see the skylight that's uh, across the river. The darkness at the bottom of the screen is the river. And while I talked to you, I walked over three miles so far. So by the time I get home, geez, that bike was coming right at me. Hello. Usually nobody's on the on this uh, walkway at this time. Anyway, by the time I get home, it'll be four miles. All right, guys. Have a great night. I'll see you soon. Peace.